In this video, we are going to completely remodel this ugly old Pepto-Bismol pink bathroom, complete with a pink toilet, a pink vanity, and a pink bathtub. We're going to get rid of all of this nonsense, and we're going to show you how to remodel it to be nice and modern and look like this in the end result with these two beautiful, stunning niches. And it starts right now. This thing belongs in like the Smithsonian, you know. To go out like I'm bulk trash. Bulk what? trash day. What? The vanity. Oh, okay. Alright, so we've got the mirror taped up, ready to go, and we're just gonna start peeling it away from the right side here, gently, and just rock it away from the wall like that. Separating it from the black blobs. Alright, so this old pink bathtub is going bye-bye we're not even going to rescue it we're not going to sand it down and glaze it it's just going and so we've already disassembled the hardware there the drain you gotta pull the drain out and you pull out a vent drain here the overflow of the drain and there's really nothing else to do underneath here luckily they didn't cement it down now this is a iron tub so it is going to be quite heavy but we won't have to shatter it or anything because we're lucky enough that there's plenty of room to just slide it out this way. You flip it up and you take it right out the door. So the dirty old tub is now sitting outside here and it actually looks really good in this bright light. Nice bright pink there. Lovely. Goodbye. And then underneath we got a nice mess to sweep up and vacuum up before we can put the new tub into place. And the old gray mirror, she ain't what she used to be. This pinky thing here is actually going out to bye-bye toilet. Yeah, so this old pink beast is about to be removed. Okay, the old vanity is gone, and now we're going to prep the wall there. We're going to put new angle stops here on the water lines. So I got this tape on here where the studs are, right? I already know where they are, but anyway, using my stud finder here, and you can see the LEDs light up right where you hit the tape. And this makes sense anyway, because the outlet box is usually strapped to a stud. You go across the wall 16 more inches, there's nothing until you hit this one. So you know you've got a uh, stud there. So as long as we maintain our screws down in the middle of the tape, we'll be fine. And then likewise down at this end one here, you'll see there's another stud there. Yep. And then if you notice here, this is this is a phenomenon that the old school cabinet guys do. They can't find the stud, so they take their hammer and they bang, bang, bang until they find it, you know? And so it hits a hole here, and, it, and the closer you get to the stud, the least <laughs> the least imprint you get there, see. So that's and uh, they didn't put any cabinet blocking in. So if I go here and measure down the wall, there's nothing there. So uh, that's fine. We can go through the studs here too. Okay. So here's your dilemma. You're gonna put the vanity up against the plumbing there. And so you got two valves there, and then you have the that's the waste drain line. See that it's got like a it's got a side view. See it's got it curves down. So what we got to do is we have to cut it off right there. I'm gonna cut it right there so that it'll just be aimed out straight. And then we'll have to figure out where to cut a hole here to allow the cold water valve to fit through. And then another hole right here that will have to straddle both that thick wood piece here and the smooth back. And then another hole will go here in front of this guy. 
It'll be close, it won't be completely up against it. But we do these all the time. And yeah, too bad the cabinet manufacturer didn't give us an open back. That would have been even yeah, better. Sometimes with these more narrow ones, they'll do that. But this right here is a PVC saw. Mm -hmm. It's just a string with two handles on it. It's a metal string. And what we do with this, and we use this to cut PVC pipes in really confined spaces like this. So we just start and go back and forth and back and forth. And after about a minute or so, it cuts all the way through the pipe. Okay. All right. So there we go, that's how it works. So now we have a straight hole. All we have to do is clean this off now. Oh, we'll sand it down a little bit to get rid of the rough edges there. And then I'll put some primer on it now. This is the best time to put the primer on it so that you don't, when you put the cabinet in it, you don't want to risk uh, spilling the primer on there. So what we do now is we get this trap adapter here. That's what this is called. This is my preferred way of terminating a uh, waste line like this is you know you put this on here and you cement it on and then see that this kind of keeps the fumes and the bugs out in case there's any bugs in there right so when we're ready to put the trap and the P trap then it just slides right into there so this is how I, I always terminate the waste lines there and then these little caps a lot of people don't realize the the handles here see the Phillips head we can unscrew those and get those off so that when we cut the round holes on the back of the vanity, it'll just slide right over it. So right now I'm going to take some of this primer here and go ahead and prime the edge of our pipe. So I just take a dip my little cotton swab thing in there, whatever that is, that material on the end of it, and I just go around it. Just make a little simple little bit of primer there. And uh, this is actually required by building code. So if you're doing a plumbing inspection, the building inspector is going to come and look for that purple or whatever color it is you use in your area. And if they don't see that in there, they're going to fail your inspection. Mm -hmm. And they'd make you do the work twice. So the reason why you need this primer is this cement, the PVC cement, is not as effective without it. And I've seen many of failures from that. And I saw somebody get thousands and thousands of dollars with a mold damage in their condo just a few weeks ago because of this very issue. So they didn't use primer and the two PVC parts of the joint came apart and water leaked inside their wall for, we don't even know how long. Okay, so what I did was I just applied some cement to both the part and the pipe and I pushed the part on and turned it 90 degrees and hold it in place for several seconds. Okay, and the reason why you hold it is sometimes PVC wants to separate, it wants to push apart. So by holding it in place until it, it dries, you're, you're fine. So this is what our terminated pipe looks like right now. And we can drill the holes in the back of the vanity. Okay, so part of the trick in determining where to drill the holes in the back of the cabinet is knowing where the back of the cabinet will sit on the wall here. Now, many people will erroneously think that it'll be up against here, but that's not true. Because you see this little ledge right in the front there? And this cabinet has one too. So as it turns out, the space is going to be between, be about three eighths of an inch by the time you get to the back. In fact, sometimes we make little wood biscuits of three eighths of an inch. And so our cabinet, this is the upper corner, is going to be so we get all of our horizontal distances just by drawing a vertical line. So this line here comes all the way up to that line. That's how far it is from the ed edge of the cabinet. That's the horizontal distance of this pipe down here. And then, of course, the center waste drain line is going to be that far away from the end of the cabinet. And then this one here will be this far away from the and then likewise, we drew little horizontal lines right here to represent the vertical center of the pipes. Okay, so all we have to do then is measure the distance from here back up to this line, which represents the top of the cabinet. So we'll get our X and Y coordinates and translate those to the back of the cabinet. 
Okay, so we've transferred the measurements to the back of the cabinet, and I just kind of tested and put little pieces of blue tape where we're going to start the holes and make sure that they lined up in front of the pipes, which they do. So now we're going to start from the back and drill a small pilot hole through each one of them, and then we'll come back around to the front and continue the holes with our hole saws. Pull this thing off again. Yeah. All right. So here in the in the baths around here, I can you can see here we added this other furring strip here. I wasn't happy with what the builder had in the corner originally, it just barely stuck out a half inch, you can see it there. And so I wanted to go out a little further and give it a little better support. So I added these and these are tap conned in with the blue tap con screws into the concrete block wall here. Now here in Florida it is actual building code that anytime you have wood touching exterior cement like that it must be pressure treated. So that is a pressure treated piece of furring strip right there. And then this 60 inch long 2x4 you see right here is going to get mounted horizontally right around here. That's what we call the stringer and that's for the bathtub and that is required by code as well. And the plumbing inspector will fail you if you don't have this. So if you mount your tub in place and they don't see that thing when they come to inspect, they'll fail you right on the spot. Now before we put the tub in we also have to take care of this mess here. This is what the builder did. This is completely unacceptable. This most likely would have failed inspection. I don't know how this even originally got past inspection, but this is not how you fill in the box out around the the tub, uh, the drain and the overflow. Because uh, you're supposed to just kind of fill it level there, not clump it all up like this. It's sitting up above the floor level here. So now there's no way the tub will sit flat. It wants to rock. So we're going to get rid of that. All right, so now we have some of the safe and sound insulation. And we got this to put inside this wall here where the tub is going to go. This is the interior wall. You don't really need to insulate this wall, but that stuff does have sound uh, reduction in there. It's, a, it's, a, it's supposed to greatly reduce the amount of noise. So since this is the wall where the tub is going to be sitting, we thought it would be best, and they've complained in this house before that there was noise coming through this wall here. So we're going to just stick it these bats of soundproofing, uh, sound reducing insulation right in between all of these studs here. Here we are, we have the sound reducing insulation in place here now. And it actually sounds much quieter just standing here inside the tub surround area. It almost sounds like a kind of like an anechoic chamber if you've ever been in one of those. So the voice isn't bouncing around like it was a few minutes ago before we installed all of this here. We're going to wait and install this last piece here after we get the tub in place and then connect up the, the um, overflow elbow there and then we'll do a water test to make sure everything is fine before we put up the extra soundproofing piece there and the drywall will go up on the back side of that wall when we're done with this now here on the on the stringer board here for the tub that's that board right there that we put up at 13 and 5 8 inches off the floor and that's the top edge of it so the manufacturer wants us to put beads of silicone across the top of it and they also want us to put beads of silicone kind of in this little area right in here for the tub to help it stick to the level floor and that's it once we put the tub in we'll slide the tub in sideways and we'll put screws into every one of the studs here with washers up against the, the lip of the tub we'll do that next all right so now on this back wall here where we're up against the bricks here. This is the cement block wall, cinder blocks. Uh, 
Here in Florida, our, our building code dictates that we have to use this this uh, silver insulation here. This looks like aluminum, kind of like this particular type is like a bubble, like that bubble wrap stuff you see, but it's got the aluminum shielding on both sides of it. So the idea is that this air gap that's in here, this three quarters of an inch air gap, will give you a maximum of about R4. It's not a whole lot, but it's better than nothing. And the ideal case is when you have a two by four stud on the outside wall here, what they would have you do is you would put it like in the halfway point. So there'd be like a two inch air gap on either side of it. That's the, the ideal case for this material. But for our case here, all we have is that three quarter inch furring strip. So we're just going to staple these across the front of the studs there before we put the, uh, before we put our tile backer boards on. All right, it is show time. We have the tub here ready to get moved into place. And I wanted to just remind you that with the, with the tub drain here and the overflow, you gotta remember, you gotta have your gaskets on both ends there. That has to have the gasket there up top and you absolutely have to have that gasket down below or the tub will leak. So when you put the tub in place, the drain hole on the tub should land directly over this, and then we can screw the drain into place. And then likewise, we'll center this over the, the uh, hole in the, the side of the tub, and that will be for the overflow. Okay, so immediately before putting in the tub, you can see in the manufacturer of the tub wants us to put this pattern of silicon caulk right there onto the floor. And then you can see on top of the stringer board there, they also want us to do beads of silicone going all the way across. So that when the tub here is moved in, the, the um, overhang of the tub will rest on that and it'll kind of mush down into it. And the caulk down there on the floor is to help in case there's any unevenness in the floor or the bottom of the tub. All right, so there we centered the tub over the drain opening there, the threaded drain opening. Now we take the drain, which is threaded here, which will go into that, and we'll screw into it. You put the plumber's putty around the edge of it there, and then we're going to use our wrench to tighten it. So this is the wrench that we use. I highly suggest you get one of these guys because sometimes dealing with the pliers is a pain in the butt, whereas this wrench is made specifically to fit down into these drains to tighten. Okay, so we're hand tightening the drain as we thread it down as much as we can, and then we'll use the wrench the rest of the way. And as you're wrenching it down, you'll see the, the putty start to ooze out around the edge. Okay, we're doing the water test now, and so far everything looks perfect, no leaks. Alright, so now that we have the panels are up over the tub, I wanted to point out something to you. So, the manufacturer of the dense shield, very strange, they tell you to mount the board here over the lip where it comes down. And the reason why I don't like doing that, I've always disagreed with that, is it puts a bend in it. It bends outward a little like this towards you. And so that will create a problem. And I've seen many a tubs, and in fact, even this one, when we demolished it, had that problem where the tiles just come out a little bit at the bottom. So we always end it right above it, like right on the lip. When we come by and we seal all of this with silicone, and then the tiles, when we mount the tiles, they'll have a nice flat surface straight up and down, and they'll come all the way down to about a 16 of an inch off the tub surface. That's the better way to do it. Then we're gonna get some of the seam tape here, and we'll tape up all these seams. We're going to caulk all the corners here, and then start tiling. Now here you can see we've started to cement in behind the drain pipe there. Make sure that stays nice and solid and doesn't move. Okay, so we got uh, the waterproofing band has all been put in place. We use the Curdy band and we're getting ready to cut two holes here to put the big niches in. And then we will start tiling away. And then the drywall people showed up and they did the skim coats and painted and it looks absolutely perfect now. Don't know if you can see the the sheen on the wall there, but 
it looks absolutely straight and perfect where it was all chipped with wallpaper shrapnel that would not come off so we are ready to start tiling and now we have both the niches in place now we can get started with the first tile we're going to start on the back wall in the left corner in the back and work our way to the right and then the two side walls will come out from there we'll have to drill a hole a round hole in the tile that goes around the tub spot right here all right here we get some tiles going up we got the first two rows going up and we're starting to put up some of the uh the rondeck frame around the the niches these are our bezel pieces that we're putting in here so we're moving right along and it's slow going at first because this piece right here the first one you put in is the most important piece you have to make sure that it's not leaning out like this or that it's not leaning back and you got to make sure it's perfectly straight up and down and then you got to make sure it's leveled this way so when you lay your level all the way across all three tiles there it should be smack dab perfect and then when you flip your level around and smack it against the face of all three of them they should be completely flat across across the tub here it should be like a plane all right so we're doing the niche here now and we're using the curdy ron deck so i just thought i'd pause real quick so what we're doing is we embed them into the vincent mortar here and then we'll come back and trial some more right over the top of it there before we put the next set of tiles over it. We've progressed nicely up the wall and we've got the niches done. We'll be grouting in our next step, but yeah, this turned out pretty nicely for us. We're very happy with this here. And it was a, a good idea that we came up with here to come past the edge of the tub. You know, most people end their tile right at the tub. And then we did the side wall here. And likewise on this side here, we decided also to carry the tile all the way across the wall here and past the door. We tiled all the way around the door here. So we have just a few more pieces to go up top there in the right hand corner. And the field of tiles will be done and ready for grouting. We're very, very pleased with these glass mosaics here on the niche the niches came out pretty nice here that was a brand new faceted glass that we saw <clears throat> ready to start grouting now we have our bucket of sponge water ready there So this replaces both the sanded and unsanded grout. And this is a rapid setting. So the only issue with this stuff is you, you don't want to mix the whole bag at once because it has a pot life of about 30 minutes from what I've seen. By 45 minutes, it's too hot for you to even scoop it out of the, the pot here. So you really need to work it in quick. So working with walls, I do it in batches. 
I like to mix about maybe half the bag and then go from there. So I'll start grouting and then our buddy will come behind me after about five minutes after me and start washing off. have been routed we just need to add a little more and then clean them off a little better and the granite guys today showed up with the sink and the granite and installed them onto our cabinets here this is a gorgeous pattern here it's got a little bit of hints of blue right in here and it goes off the darker gray here and then they also made the backsplash for us as well but this really makes the bathroom right now. So we had them drill the widespread holes. We're gonna get a widespread faucet. So that means they're eight inches separated from, from the cold water to the hot water. And it's usually three separate pieces, hot water here, cold water here, and the faucet here. Those faucets usually cost about anywhere from 90 to $100 which is double the price of the, the four inch. Well, here we are the next day and the grout has dried. It looks nice. Now we're just going to caulk in the corners. And uh, of course, in some of the parts of the, the niche there, we'll go ahead and grout those. We've grouted those. We're going to caulk in the corners of the niche as well there. But overall, this looks really nice, very classy looking, and matches the granite that, that put, was put in over here, complements it very nicely. And you can see how it was a great idea to go ahead and tile all the way around the doorway too. Okay, so... After tiling this whole shower surround area here, we're finally ready to test out the new shower head and the new bathtub. So let's give it a shot. And if the water comes out good there on the tub spout, let's try the shower. Come on. That's how you do it. at the right angle and everything. So now we're going to do the water test and I always like to lay down paper towels underneath because that will show you instantly if there's any drops of water. There should be zero, not one drop. Okay, so the water's been running a few minutes now. I usually like to run it for about 10 minutes because sometimes it can take a while. You might have a leak that's very, 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 very slight and it might take a while for it to rear its ugly head because remember the water is continuously streaming through this hole 